Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part time musician who wants to go full time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. On the Profitable Musician Show, we give you practical tips and strategies to increase the income you're already making and tap into new streams so you can create more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. We also help you think like a business owner so you can keep more of the money that you make. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, author of the best-selling book, The Musician's Profit Path, and host of the popular Profitable Musician Summit. And as you can probably tell, I am obsessed with helping musicians like you to build a rock-solid fan base and income foundation so you can fund the music you are driven to create, share your message with the world, and fulfill your God-given purpose as a musician without stressing out about where your next dollar is going to come from. You've got the talent. You just need the marketing and business tools to take it to the next level. Now let's dive in to the Profitable Musician Show. I am so excited to be here with Stacy Bedford from Banzoogle. Banzoogle is one of my absolute favorite companies that helps musicians. And Stacy has been the CEO for two years, and I'm finally getting to talk to her, which I'm excited about. I've had so many great relationships with Banzoogle, Dave Cool. We've hung out together at conferences, and I met Melanie last year. But it's so great to finally talk to Stacy and get the perspective of you know the CEO on how Banzoogle is helping musicians. And especially like I got really excited when I saw an article that they put out a few months ago that said, you know, musicians earned $5 million during the pandemic through Banzoogle. And I was like, wow, like my audience needs to know about this because I think musicians are thinking, oh, you know, nobody's earning during the pandemic, but I think we're just shifting how we're earning and stuff. So I'm excited to talk to Stacey about this. Um, to start off, I just to love to know, Stacy. Like, how did you get involved with Banzoogle? Like, mu- are you musical? Do you just love music? How did you get involved with a musical-related company? Well, thank you for having me. And um, before I start, I just wanted to say I was speaking with Dave before uh, before this interview, and we acknowledged that it's been it's our five-year anniversary of Women of Substance uh, and Banzoogle's collaboration. <laughs> so I think we need to celebrate in December somehow. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I've been at Benzoogle for, uh, Benzoogle is a 17 year old company, but I've been here for about 13 years now. Um, it's based in Montreal and, um, I'm, I'm living in Ottawa now. We're a fully distributed team and I've always, I, I'm a recreational guitar player, a terrible karaoke singer, but I sing with my whole heart and, uh, a huge music lover and fan. I think I spent, um, most of my time through university and college, going to shows four days a week whenever I can, I was just hoovering all the music. So I've been very passionately supporting the arts for most of my life. And um, so when I started at Ben Zuckel, um, it was about 13 years ago. And back then, remote companies were, uh, they, they just weren't, they just weren't around. Um, so <laughs> picking up, picking up a, a job with a remote company was kind of interesting to begin with. But um, I started out as Ben Zuckel's first customer support rep um, back then. So uh, I've, I've kind of moved up the ranks for the last 13 years. And the, the real benefit to me and I think to our customers is that you have someone leading the company that has a huge customer focused perspective mm-hmm. um, as a result of where, where I got to begin <laughs> the company. Yeah. That's so cool. I mean, it's really one of those, like I started out in the mail room and now I'm the CEO. It's kind of that kind of thing, but a virtual version. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was sorting all the mail, all the customer mail. So, Oh yes. That's <laughs> awesome. So, um, I would love, well, first of all, I'd love to know about Banzoogle. Like I know it was started by musicians and it's built for musicians. What makes it really unique as a platform for musicians that, you know, maybe other website platforms like Wix or WordPress or, you know, that try to like cater to musicians, but they aren't, 
they don't really fit as well. What makes Van Zugel like really unique? Yeah, um, that's a good that's a good question. So Van Zugel, we're in a very unique situation because um, we're fully bootstrapped, and that means that we've never taken external funding, and we're not beholden to shareholders or <laughs> we and we don't have any evil overlords. So the unique thing about Van Zugel is that we're really I'll talk a bit about our beginnings and how we start. We were founded, but um, the cool thing about us today, because we're such an old company, is that all of the decisions in our product roadmap, they're really driven by our customers. So um, what our customers need, so what artists need today, and as a team of artists ourselves, um, what we feel um, artists will need to, what we anticipate artists will need um, to be successful uh, in the current music climate. So that's how, <laughs> that's one of the reasons why Benzical ended up with a gazillion tools. But yeah, so Benzical started about seven, uh, it's, our origin story is kind of interesting. So we were founded by a bassist uh, who worked at a record label. Um, and once his band, like there was the, the story that you hear of a band folding because of disagreements and then he, uh, he continued, he, they're signed at uh, Donald K. Donald in Montreal. And when the band folded, he continued to work at the record label. Um, so this was back in 2003 and websites were just becoming important for artists. So um, it just became crazy for him to keep up with the demand at the label of artists wanting to update their tour dates and their blogs and add pictures and make uh, set up merch stores. So uh, he basically created Benzugal to make it easier to do his own job. Um, and that allowed artists to be empowered to update their own sites without a computer science degree or knowing any sort of web design uh, conventions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Ben, uh, the other component was that Ben's needed to be able to do it on the road. Um, so that's, that's kind of how Ben Ziegel was born. Um, and today we just kind of keep that whole uh, culture and movement going. 80% um, of the staff are artists themselves. We have opera, sing we have three opera singers on staff. We have beat makers, we have sound engineers, and we really draw from our own experience and use our own product when we're developing it. That's so cool. And I mean, it's just like the story with Derek Sivers that, you know, he created CD Baby to solve his own problem, to help sell his CDs to other people. And like then his friends needed help and all that. And I know you guys now have a relationship with CD Baby, which would be interesting to talk about. But like, I just think that that makes the best companies when you're solving either your own problem or a problem that you're seeing like really close to you and you know exactly what you need to solve it. And then turns out that millions of other people have the same problem, right? Yeah, and that's a really cool thing about Benzicle is that we don't have a massive marketing budget like Wix. Like we don't release something small and then push a Super Bowl ad about it. Our, uh, our bread and butter is really word of mouth. People talk about us and we're so proud of that. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to put in my plug for the fact that I tell all my Academy members about it. I promote it on my Women of Substance podcast and everywhere I can. So if you're not a Van Zugel member, you got to go use our promo code WOS15 and that will give you some, you know, 30 days free trial and 15% off and, you know, some awesome things to help you check it out and see if it's the right thing for you. Um, but I do want to touch on the, you know, and you guys helped people with um, Host Baby when they shut down. What's the relationship between CD Baby and Banzoogle now? So it's a it's a long, we've had a long history because both companies are about the same age. Uh, we both started around the same time uh, and uh, we both share very similar company cultures and that we um, were both very artist centric. Um, I don't think that anybody who works with either of our companies would think of us as the men. <laughs> We're just like no. a collective group of artists helping artists. So when, uh, I think it was last August, um, Dave Cool was at a, con a music conference um, in LA and Tracy Morgan reached out to him and said, um, we're thinking about um, decommissioning host baby. Um, I know that we've been competitors this whole time, but we can't think of a better a group that uh, to partner with to help ease the burden of these customers since we're 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 shuttering the service. So it was a it was a, a gargantuan undertaking, but we planned it out in a very short time, and uh, we knew Host Baby was closing their doors anyways. And if those are if if we didn't step in to try to help, those artists would have lost all of their content. So 
the first thing that we did we, was we looked at trying to recreate some of the designs and the tools that Host Baby had so that we'd be able to migrate their content comfortably. And then, uh, yeah, so we, we planned all of that out. And um, I guess the migration was executed in January and February of this year. And then the pandemic hit. <laughs> but um, the, uh, the migration was quite successful. And uh, I think it was close to 80% of the customers who uh, we migrated over stuck with Benzoogle and um, they're, they're settling into their new, new tool set and we've, uh, we, we're continuing to partner at CD Baby. So one of the benefits to that par partnership for our existing very patient customer <laughs> base is that now they in we include digital distribution in our pro plan. Yeah, that's really, really cool. And I actually had a couple of students that went through that. I remember being on Host Baby like forever ago. And, you know, it, it really, it hadn't updated with the times. And so I'd always been like, oh my gosh, use Banzoogle. Uh, I did have some people that were like, I set this up in 2007 and I'm not switching, you know, but they went through this transition and it was just, they couldn't say, you know, anything bad about this, the situation. Like they, they knew they had no choice. And, but Banzoogle made it so easy. So we really appreciate that you guys did that for all those artists. Um, so Banzoogle, like as we're talking about, you know, artists made $5 million in the, during the pandemic using Banzoogle. Like, like you said, Banzoogle has so many tools. And I think even a lot of artists that I've sent to Banzoogle and they've been with Banzoogle for several years really don't realize the breadth of tools that Banzoogle has available. And when I tell them, oh, you can sell your stuff commission free on Banzoogle, I can, because they're like, oh, I was gonna <laughs> use this service or this service. They didn't know they could do that. Or you could set up your you know, uh, subscription service on Banzoogle. They're like, you can, I thought I had to use Patreon. You know, So can you kind of, I know there's a lot of tools to cover, but can you kind of give people an idea of like all the different cool things you can do on Banzoogle? It's not just a website. Yeah, so like I said, we started out as a, as a website building platform, but over the last 17 years, it's really evolved. And I think we had five features when we launched originally in 2003, and now we have hundreds of features. Um, and I don't know if it's a Canadian thing, but we have a habit of not talking ourselves up. So <laughs> thank you for the- Oh, <laughs> humble <good>. Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the things that we provide are, uh, all of our sales tools are commission free. So you can have a store to sell physical products. We have digital download sales. Um, we have a tip jar feature with donations. We have live and virtual ticket event sales and a really robust uh, subscriptions feature with uh, tiered subscriptions that I could talk about on its own <laughs> on its right. segment for a while. Uh, we have a bunch of fan engagement tools. So that includes your mailing list, call to actions for landing pages, um, integrations with social media like YouTube, SoundCloud, Facebook, Bandcamp, Bands in Town, Twitch, Crowdcast. There's a bunch of connections that integrate really seamlessly into your website. So they're not like widgets that you would use on, um, on an external site that you've built like, like WordPress. They, they integrate seamlessly into your design and those integrations are supported by us. So if there's any issues, you just reach out to us. And our, uh, on, the, on the website building side, our, t our tools are fully responsive. So if you're viewing a band website from a desktop, a mobile, or a tablet, they will respond and uh, resize beautifully to work across all of those. All of our themes are fully customizable. We start you off with some template options, or you can go completely blank and have fun with it. All those tools are really easy to use. So like I said, uh, in the beginning, we wanted to make it possible for those bands that were signed to the label to be able to update their sites from the road without a computer science degree. Our original motto was so easy, your drummer can do it. And we've really maintained that throughout the last 17 years. So you don't need to ne know anything about coding or design. You can create a great website, EPK, or even a tiered fan subscription site pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many things you can do. You know, you can set up a, like a, a freebie where people put in their email and you send them a free download. You know, there's so many things that people don't think about that are built into there. So I wanted you to kind of go over those for sure. Um, so let's talk about this, what people were doing during the pandemic. Like, what did you find that people were maybe using differently or utilizing more than they ever did before from Banzoogle during the pandemic? 
Well, one of the things that you noted earlier was that the uh, customer sales really exploded when people were anticipating that artists would be hit hard because they weren't able to tour, or play live events, and uh, pretty much their whole business model was turned on its head during this pandemic. We were we were really surprised and happy to see the opposite. Van Zubel had originally planned out this whole roadmap and set of goals, and we really flipped that on its head in March when the pandemic hit. And we made our focus all about artists uh, and artists earning more revenue. Um, so our whole mandate this year is to try to make our, fan, our, our customers more money. Um, and as a result, from April to August, our customers have sold over $5 million. Um, That's which insane. Is and you guys, you provided so many free, you were doing like weekly master classes. I got to do one about uh, teaching online and, you know, you were providing so many resources, but then musicians actually ran with it and started actually making money, right? And using your tool yeah. to do it. Yeah. And it like our website sales really exploded. Um, what we're seeing in the pandemic is really different across all artists and it's really, uh, it's really unique. So some, some music teachers, for example, on our platform, uh, they were selling, they were selling services, uh, in person before. Now, now they're using our subscriptions feature to sell, uh, recurring, uh, either pre-recorded lessons or live streaming lessons and that's really interesting because they're they're just finding a way to make their business work during the pandemic um, we're seeing singer songwriters branch out and diversify their revenue streams just uh, there were more live streaming events in the beginning but also singer songwriter workshops lessons um, listing service pages for studio work and things that they maybe didn't put a lot of energy into before. And then of course, uh, with our tip jar feature, we added that because <laughs> we noticed uh, we noticed with live streaming, a lot of people were putting like Venmo links on their Facebook live stream. And uh, it just felt really disjointed for as we, we kind of put ourselves in the fan, the shoes of Ben, and we were watching a lot of these as music consumers ourselves. And you had to go somewhere to, to send a tip and then your live stream was not on your website. So we ended up adding um, a chip jar feature where you could integrate your live stream right on your website and then also accept tips right from there um, using our regular store checkout process. And the interesting thing about that is that we found that when artists were selling um, live streaming ticket sales through Ben Zugel, they were making, uh, and then we added the tip jar option. So artists, which some artists tested out um, asking for tips instead of selling tickets to their live streaming events, um, they made on average two times the uh, the revenue from wow. just asking for tips. Yeah, so there's a lot of opportunities and fans are sometimes maybe valuing um, your art more than you would consider. <laughs> uh, I think that's so true. That's what I always re recommended with house concerts when we could actually do them is mm -hmm. that, you know, you never know to somebody like to you, maybe you're worth $20, but to somebody else who income is not nearly as much as a factor as it is to you, it's like they could just throw a hundred in there, you know, and you don't yeah. know. Yeah, for sure. And um, it's, it's interesting. So we kind of, we kind of looked at that data. Benzigal were very data driven. So we, we looked at the tip jar data and then we said, okay, so <laughs> if, if fans are given the opportunity to value whatever the artist is selling, where else can we do that? So back in 2007, we had added pay what you want music sales after Radiohead uh, launched their pay what you want album. Mm -hmm. And um, so we decided to take that that concept and bring it to our subscriptions model. So just last week we launched a pay what you can tier option um, and also a free tier option because now like maybe you do have super fans but they're in a hard place in the pandemic and they would like to continue to be involved in everything that you're doing but they're not able to right now. You wanna maintain relationships with those fans um, and this gives our artists a way to do that. That makes total sense. So do you, do you have any kind of a breakdown of like what artists were making money on during this time? Yeah, so it's it's kind of funny because the biggest group of sales really has been merch by far. Mm -hmm. So merch sales are through the roof for our customers right now. During that time, almost, well, I think it was like 3.8 million was just from merch. Wow. Um, it, yeah, and some examples of merch that artists have been selling are um, t-shirts, hoodies, hats, posters, stickers, um, instruments. We have some music shops on Ben Zugel, of course, CDs and vinyl. 
Um, and some people are selling cassettes too. Vinyls and cassettes uh, sales are through the roof. That's so weird. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, we had this band. Um, I don't. I don't think I can give specific data on artists, but we had this band called uh, Ninja Sex Party that joined Bentacle recently, and they used our pre-order feature, and they sold out within a day. I think. Well, I can't give the numbers out, but it was a very successful sale, and it was physical signed CDs. So we're finding that artists who have some sort of a unique offering are doing really well. I love that you have the pre-order option. Actually, I didn't even know you had that because I, oh. I did my own like version of pre-order back when I released my Christmas CD. And you know, I always, tell, I always tell people it was so exciting to like have already paid off the entire CD when I actually got the CDs in my hand. I hadn't even you know, put them out in the world yet. And I'd already paid off the entire thing. And then every CD that I sold after that was total profit. So I love that you guys are doing that. I think not enough artists are doing pre-order campaigns. We, uh, we have a few different selling options. I know I kind of brushed over what kind of things you can sell at Benzoogle, but when you're selling anything at Benzoogle, um, some of the promotional tools you can use are setting a fixed price, the pay what you want, the free option. You can also offer discounts. Um, you can offer free item in exchange for email with your music. Um, and then there's pre-orders and crowdfunding, which are a whole other level of uh, marketing. Yeah, I know that you order, you uh, started doing the crowdfunding option, and I know it's not as robust as something like quick, uh, Kickstarter, but I always tell musicians, like, those huge, complicated crowdfunding campaigns are so overwhelming, and most musicians don't do them because they're too stressful, and I love the idea of just, like, a 30-day, you know, easy, like, allow your fans to donate kind of campaign and that seems like something you could do pretty easily on with your your uh, version of crowdfunding on Bandzoogle, right? Yeah, and the idea is like, uh, especially for indie artists, um, it's, it's a good, it's always a good idea to start small, like with a single or something. And if you're, um, if you're lowering your, um, your early, your initial investment, you're lowering your risk. So something, something like crowdfunding allows you to, um, to kind of test the waters to see how many of your fans would be interested in, um, in subscribing or purchasing something like that. In the, in the beginning, we launched the um, kind of a lightweight um, crowdfunding option. And that was just in response to what happened at Pledge Music, because mm -hmm. we had all of the I remember that. Yeah, we had all the tools in place and we had some members who were, who were creating crowdfunding campaigns through Benzoogle. So we kind of like really quickly uh, shot out like a lightweight crowdfunding option, but we're going to be building on that this year. And we have a few exciting things coming. Ooh, I can't wait to find out what's coming. I mean, there's always new tools that come out and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe they thought of that. Or I can't believe they built that in. And it's all comes with your, you know, your Benzoogle membership. So it's, it's really awesome that you guys have Oh, you're always thinking about new stuff to help musicians for sure. Have you seen anything change like over the time period of the pandemic? Um, you know, at the beginning, there was a lot more live streams. Have you seen that shift into, you know, musicians doing more different things as the time goes on and it's probably going to keep going on? <laughs> Yeah, and actually, I'm glad you asked the question because I feel like shouting some advice from the rooftops and I wouldn't mind taking this opportunity. Please do. <laughs> so uh, when, the, when the pandemic hit, there was like, there was an overwhelming amount of live streams. And as a huge music consumer myself, I felt like there was, it was almost too much. I've seen a lot of artists leveraging their own audience, uh, their socials, their fan lists. And when you're doing live streams and playing weekly and you have a finite repertoire, artists might see some diminishing audiences. And I think that this is a challenge that a lot of artists are seeing right now. Like, okay, I can't play live shows, so let's do the live stream thing. And then they're, maybe they're not seeing like the same numbers as, of viewers as they were early on in the pandemic. Um, so I wanted to recommend some things to keep it fresh. You, I think that it's a good idea to look at live streaming with other bands so that you can share each other's audiences and not saturate your own with, this, with the same content. Um, I also think that it's important to look at how you can help out other people in this pandemic, and that's a huge opportunity for artists. Contact your local colleges or businesses or anywhere that you might have planned an in-person tour. Many of these businesses are working remotely now, and that's challenging as a whole for them to be building on their own company culture. Um, and they're looking for ways to make things fun and, uh, and just create a sense of togetherness with, with their staff. 
So um, schools are having virtual ceremonies and events. You can pitch shows for things like that. So think outside of the box when you're thinking about live streaming, like play with other bands and then look at other audiences that you could, you could, you could sh uh, share your music with. And then there's the social media takeover concept. So trade Instagram accounts for a weekday or, or a weekend or a, a day with some other bands in different cities where you might have listeners or artists with a similar genre. Everybody, everybody has new problems right now. And the idea is to find a way to help other businesses or artists with their problems and with, with your music. Like some examples are like, if you play outside at an old folks home, uh, you're keeping them safely stimulated. Um, not only is that a really kind gesture, but it's also a really good publicity event. Tell the local media about it. I think everybody can use some good, good news right now. And people really want to know more about you and kind gestures can help grow your community of supporters. Our, our lead QA, Desi, she volunteered for an organization in Nashville um, that recently shifted from beds, uh, to bedside music performances to Zoom. So there's a lot of uh, different opportunities um, as artists right now. And when you're working for yourself, especially during the pandemic, it's a constant hustle. So the actions that you take um, to grow your business, they don't have to always be noise like the bombarding <laughs> live streaming that was happening in the early days. Um, your hustle can be all about solving other people's problems. And I don't think that it matters if those actions are selfish as long as the outcome is that you're helping someone else. Yeah, I love that. And I, and I always encourage artists to like reach out to venues because venues are struggling too. And if they've, they've got a following on a Facebook page, you know, they can maybe do virtual concerts and you guys can split the money and you can help them out and you can help yourself out. There's, and I love the idea of businesses and colleges. I know I've seen my alma mater has been doing a weekly concert series and some of them have been, you know, students of the college and some of them have been outside artists just to inspire the students, you know, in their music department and in their college in general. So I think those are super great ideas. And we do, we have to keep being proactive because this is not ending anytime soon. I mean, it's, it's yeah. the way it is now is going to be this way for a little while longer. So we need to just think outside of the box, like you said. Yeah. And in the cli this climate, like you really need to get up and go. But the good thing about it is that when the pandemic is over, even if it's in a long time from now, the artists who have put all of the energy to adapt they'll have a much bigger range of strategies for monetizing their music business. And those are things that they might have never bothered with before, but now we have to. Yeah, I know. You really expand your streams of income. You've thought outside of the box. Now you've got maybe, you know, 10 different ways that you could make money. And I always say like, you can, you know, pull this lever or pull this lever, um, depending on what's happening in the world and happening in your life. And if you have more levers to pull, then you have more ways to make money. So you're not like, oh my gosh, I just lost, I only have two streams of income and I just lost one of them entirely. <laughs> you know, you don't want to be in that position. Yeah, and like this is, it's a terrible time, but it's a quiet time. And this is a great time to, the quiet is a good time to work on setting up your online business and, uh, and just focusing on your strategies right now. Um, we've seen some really interesting things. You were asking about like where that $5 million is how that breaks up. We've seen an uptick in the subscriptions users and they're, uh, the ones that are doing successful are really offering some unique things like handwritten notes. We have one artist who is uh, sending out like a high quality print. So they're really leveraging, a lot of artists create art in different, many different ways mm -hmm. and they're leveraging those other mediums um, to help them through this pandemic. And there's a lot of things that you do day to day as an artist that you don't think about, but your super fans would be really interested in having an eye on that. Um, so if you're doing band practice, bring like record that, put it in, put it in your blog post, put that in your tier, like access to band practice. There's uh, mm -hmm. like, if they want to hear about how you came to write a certain song that's really popular, those are things that are really interesting to your fans. Yeah, uh, totally. Or, you know, behind the scenes in the studio or anything where you're giving them special access that they wouldn't normally have. I think fans are really interested in that. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. These are all some really great ideas. So is there anything that we haven't touched on that, that Bandzoogle is doing right now 
to help artists in you know our unique situation and, and in the future? Yeah, so uh, I was talking about our process. So what we do is we look at customer feedback. We keep our fingers on the pulse about what's happening right now in the music industry. When the, when the pandemic started, we uh, the first thing that we knew that we could do out of the gate was to provide a lot of support resources for musicians. And that included educating artists about the things that you can do um, to help yourself through like government grants, um, services that are available to help you. So we have an ebook that's out on the Benzigal blog. I think you can access it. Anyways, it's not just for Benzigal members. You can, you can look up some resources for artists during the pandemic. And it's not just stuff that we do, it's stuff that's available globally. So we put out a lot of educational information and we were always running different webinars and putting out ebooks that are accessible to the public. When the pandemic hit, the first thing that we wanted to do was look at how to help artists generate more income. And uh, we, before we had um, event ticket sales available at Ben Zugel, um, and we quickly realized that that wasn't going to be feasible anymore. So we opened up um, tickets, uh, live streaming ticket sales for all customers. That was previously something that was only available on our pro tier, but mm -hmm. on uh, which is twenty dollars a month. But now, if, even if you're on the light plan, you can sell live streaming tickets or events. Um, so we're always thinking about uh, different tools to add for artists, but um, some interesting things that we have coming um, are um, to support, um, right now with Ben Zugel, you can sell CD and or vinyl and um, the digital version. Uh, you can sell bundles of music with the physical and digital version. Um, but we're going to be uh, in the near future working on product bundles so you can combine a whole bunch of different items from across all of your different uh, e-commerce tools. Um, that's something you're going to see in the next 12 months. In the short term, you're going to see, uh, I can't talk about it too much because it's coming soon, but you're going to see the ability to sell print on demand items through Benzigal. Oh and my gosh, people are going to be so excited about this. I hope so. I, I, uh, the first thing I thought about during the pandemic was how to keep my staff safe and then how to keep the artists safe. And I don't want them going to the, to the post office. So <laughs> that's going to be coming soon. And you're going to see a lot more improvements uh, on our existing features. Basically, anything that customers are asking for they need right now, we're always, we're always working on those. Wow. So are you saying, for example, that I put out an EP? And I decide not to create any physical ones. Go and get a, you know, get them to create them for me. Can I do those one off if someone orders them from my website? The, this update that we have coming is going to be related to merch. And the reason why we focused on that first is because we just noticed that that was the biggest way that artists were making money right mm. now. So that's how we prioritized it. It was overwhelming. How many, if we look at our, um, our store data right now, it's overwhelming to see how many people are selling t-shirts right now. And that could be really complicated, especially if you have to keep uh, like specific size mixes. Oh, on totally. Hand. That's it's a huge investment for artists. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. That is going to be really helpful. So any kind of, is it just t-shirts or any kind of merch? Like if I wanted to do a, you know, a mug or something like that. It's the, the options are fast. <laughs> wow. That's exciting. Yeah. I don't think I'm supposed to be talking about this. Uh oh. <laughs> Well, that's hopefully okay. we release this after you guys come out with that update. But I mean, that's that's exciting. I think that's really exciting. And um, you're right. Like, I don't want to go to the post office all the time. It's not only is it unsafe, but it's also annoying, you know? So this is really, really useful and people can order what they want. And I also am a huge fan of bundles. So I'm glad that you're making that available. I personally think bundles are the best way to sell things nowadays, especially if you want to sell your CDs, people are going to really want to buy it with a piece of merch. I think that makes it a lot more enticing. So it'll be great to have bundle options or, you know, different pieces of merch that people want, like a low level kind of items and higher level, like super fan bundles, I like to call them. So that is going to be really amazing. Yeah, and uh, to on your note about the different things people are selling, um, there's some. There's been some. When I was going through the data before this interview, I was, I saw some pretty funny things. So people are really jumping on uh, what their fans might need or what be, might be interesting during the pandemic. And I noticed that there's quite a few artists selling face masks right now. I was gonna say mask, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, branded face masks. There's a lot of wall calendars. There's custom ringtones. Um, we even have a couple of artists who created a mini series 
um, and they're using their subscriptions feature to launch those monthly. So it's, and uh, I also saw um, aprons, uh, like there's some artists who really know their customer base well and understand what their other interests are outside of their music and they know like putting out their own recipes and then selling aprons, like they're really just jumping on the bandwagon of um, what, other, what other things can I provide that might be interesting to these customers. And uh, I think everybody knows that there's a strong movement to support local. Um, so fans know that this is a really great thing to be doing right now. Oh gosh, that's so that's such a great like idea to come out with things like that that are like recipes and aprons. How fun, you know, if you love to, like during the pandemic, you're baking a lot of bread or something. I, <laughs> I baked a banana bread every single week from I think like April to Ju through June. And I never did that before. So, you know, you get into something funky and then like your fans might be interested in that. So you never know. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because all of the stress that we're all handling right now as artists, it's manifesting in some really interesting ways. And some of those are really, uh, they're really constructive ways to deal with your stress. And I think it was uh, Melanie Melanie Keeley, our communications manager, just put out this blog post about um, wellness during the pandemic for artists. So um, there's some interesting resources in our in our blog about um, how artists can be successful right now, but also how they can take care of themselves. Yeah, it's so important. If we don't have enough, if we're used to having a lot of contact with our fans, like physical contact and being in front of audiences and, and getting that feedback as an artist, sometimes it just, you feel like you're in this bubble and you're not, you don't know if your art matters anymore, you know? So it is really important to, to pay attention to, like, like you said, stress and just like your mental state. Oh, goodness. Well, thank you. This has been so great. And I, I love knowing, especially the merch piece. That's so interesting to me. And, and I really do hope like every band is coming out with a, a mask. I know I've been having to buy my kids. They've been like, I want this. My one daughter was like, I want a musical theater mask. And the other one's like, I want this branded kind of mask. And, you know, so I think we should all be doing uh, stuff like that, that people can use from home or use in this particular situation that maybe you've never offered as, as, a, as an artist before. So thank you for all the great ideas. And just, again, you guys, if you're not on Banzoogle yet, I just, we just gave you a million reasons to be on Banzoogle. Um, and I love what Stacy said about this is, the this is a quiet time. This is the best time to get your online house in order um, and get your business truly up online. I know tons of teachers that are realizing, gosh, I should have gotten on the online bag bandwagon a long time ago, but you know, it's that whole thing about when's the best time to plant a tree. You know, it was back then when a long time ago, but now, now is the second best time. So go out and, you know, get set up. And so you can really start leveraging what's available now and after this is over or whatever it looks like you know on the other side of it things will be different there still will be more online than there ever was before so you want to be ready for that so that's my little soapbox there anything else you want to say stacy i just wanted to say thank you for having me it's been really nice to get some face time with you you are welcome you guys there'll be a link uh, underneath this episode to go check out Banzoogle. Like she said, go check out all of their, their blog posts. They have like these pillar posts. I remember in the beginning of the pandemic, they did one on live streaming that is like so in depth on every way that you could live stream and every tool and all that stuff. So go check that out. They're totally free. Uh, get your free trial by putting in WOS15 and just see if Banzoogle is right for you. Test out their tools and all that. And thank you, Stacy, for giving us your time today and, and letting us know all the ways musicians can keep making money. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at rondifay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. 
And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician. 